All right, we have our instant reaction, uh, Zach. Uh, Utah 20, Baylor 13. Game was right there for the take. Man, it was they, like they played three quarters pretty pretty well and just kind of like fourth quarter just things just started going wrong. Utah started to get some things rolling and Baylor could never really catch up. Yeah, obviously not a uh, primetime performance for Sawyer Robertson in his first college start. Um, you can't put everything on Sawyer, uh, but he did not play well. Um, you know, and I mentioned it in my column, but um, it was tough on him at certain times because of the false start penalties. Mm. When you're starting behind the sticks, uh, that's never a good place to start. I don't care if your name's Tom Brady, you know. Right. Um, but he also made a couple of really ill-advised throws. That's true. And I like I I kind of disagree that he didn't play well. I don't think he played great, but like I don't think obviously that last throw in the in the at the fourth quarter lost them the game pretty much. Yeah, you gotta like, you gotta eat it on that. Uh, but at the same time, like they were leading up until that, right? And he well, he didn't like help them like he didn't also didn't kill them so i like you know you're right that wasn't the best game from sawyer robertson but to say it was just like the sky is falling i i wouldn't go that far maybe not and uh i mean that's uh i'll i'll concede the point to a certain extent i thought the timing on a lot of the, the balls whether it was a little uh end zone route or just some of the downfield stuff was just like a little off, you know, if they could get that uh, synced up a little bit more, those could be big plays, yeah. could be touchdowns. I mean, so. He's been repping with the number twos since, you know, probably the second week of fall camp. So, yeah. You know. And I mean, again, they were, like you said, they were in the game right. and, and should have won the game. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. They should have. I mean, they really just gift wrapped it for for Utah, um, but signs of hope uh, for Baylor in some areas. I would say defense made big strides. Absolutely, like you want all the things that and you know, all the buzzwords that that people talk about: intensity, effort, um, you know, focus. Uh, at least for most of the game. Uh, we're there mm -hmm. and that's that's a big step in the right direction coming off the texas state loss and just yeah a very that's trending up that side of the ball is very much trending up and uh you know good things yeah and uh i would also say offensive line was better mm -hmm. uh you mentioned in the notebook that they they made some shuffling uh, there. What did they do? Uh, let's see. Campbell Barrington was he was starting at left tackle last week. He's now starting at right tackle, mm -hmm. and then they brought in a new redshirt freshman uh, who didn't start, didn't really play much at all last week uh, to start at left tackle. So, uh, and I know Dave Aranda, like he kind of pointed out, he kind of called out the right side of the line after the Texas State game. Mm -hmm. So that's where they shifted Campbell and. I thought he held up pretty well. Yeah, and uh, I, I, so I thought they blocked well, okay? Yeah. They, they in fact, like at the very, uh, I want to say one of the first carries of the game for Baylor, Utah just ate it up. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be a long day for Baylor's running game. And then they stuck with it. It got better, uh, and they were moving the ball on the ground respectively, you know? They didn't really break anything long, but – um, you know, Dominic Richardson had a really good first half, uh, went down and was kind of slow to get up at one point. And I don't know if that affected him at all in the they second half. They didn't really come back there. They didn't really run the ball very much in the fourth quarter. They were well playing behind the eight. They ball. did, uh, they did on that position right yeah. before the, the Utah's true, trying true, touchdown. True, 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 yeah. <laughs> because, to because that would be uh, one of my big critiques. So I, uh, while we just mentioned some hopeful things for Baylor, I am all about playing bad cop here because uh, that was really the tenor of my column was right now. The only thing, what I said was the only thing Baylor's good at is losing. I mean, uh, it's six in a row. Um, and they should win. They will win next week against Long Island. I'm going to call that one, but, uh, 
at the same time, um, you know, you've they should feel disheartened after this one because um, there's really no upside to uh, a game like this right. because it, it was right there for the taking and you just, blew up, you know, kind of right. fumbled it away. And um, and that's bad. I mean, that's what I said in my column was that's what bad teams do. <laughs> and um, there's still a lot of football to be played but they've got to get some things figured out. And, yeah. and part of it, you know, uh, Dave said, we've got to learn to win. They got to learn fast. Right. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, Utah people that I was talking to before the game asked me if this was a must win for Baylor. And I said that I didn't necessarily think it was a must win. I agree. Because, you know, as long as they took some steps and uh, made some improvements from the Texas state game, I would call that a win, mm-hmm. but like now sitting here when it was like right there, mm-hmm. like it has a much different feel. Right, right, right. So I'm not saying like, I, I still don't think like the sky is falling on the season, but mm-hmm. like, yeah, this game feels a lot different in context. <laughs> yes. If let's say, let, let's say same final score, but Utah had gotten out to a 17 0 lead right. and then Baylor like plays itself back into the game. You'd have a f- different feeling out of this one. Right. But when you're up 13 to three in the third quarter and Utah's offense has done basically diddly squat against you. And, you know, I mean, Baylor's defense, you know, should feel good about his performance because it did enough to win the game and it did not get a lot of help from Baylor's offense. And like I said, Baylor's play calling. I thought uh, that possession right before Utah's game time drive, the three and out, where and I know that uh, Baylor more than any team I've ever seen uh, under Jeff Grimes will run the ball on like a third and five or or longer. Mm-hmm. You know they had a play early in the first half where it was like third and eight and ran it and picked it up. Right, that Dom Richardson. Just yeah, won. yeah, and it was like wow because <laughs> right. uh, you don't see that a lot. You know that's a passing down, but uh, I just thought they were showing not a lot of confidence in yeah. Sawyer Robertson at that point um, because you ought to be able to pick up a third and five on the, on, you know, through the air. I mean, so, or at least give yourself a chance. And I, I don't, I like, I look forward and I'm like thinking of a bowl game and all that. And I'm like, will this team get to six wins, you know, I, I one next week. Right. Mm. But, well, know, like, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's certainly a fair question. Um, and, you know, again, not to be negative Nelly or whatever, <laughs> but, uh, I had to, I had to at least bring it up in my column. And I, what I said was if, so I said, they're going to win next week, you know, that much should be a given. <laughs> um, and, but then if the season sort of trends the way it is right now, the cries for Dave Miranda's head among the Baylor fan base are going to be a lot louder. And I, what I said in my column was, is that fair? Well, it doesn't really matter if it's fair or not, because it's just the way it is in college football. I mean, um, yesterday doesn't matter. I mean, uh, the, Aranda did an amazing coaching job in his second year, taking Baylor to a Big 12 championship, Sugar Bowl win, most wins in, in program history. But um, does that satisfy the fan base right now? No. <laughs> you know, they're all – Hot and mad, right? right. Now. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, emphasis on hot. Right, in more ways than one. Yeah, and let's talk about that for just a second. Uh, uh, I, so I asked Kyler Jordan about the heat, you know, mm-hmm. and um, and he mentioned, you know, it's not an excuse. We practice in it all the time. Yada yada yada. And he's right. right. Uh, certainly, Baylor should be more acclimated to it than Utah, but. I just felt like, man, Baylor's defense didn't get much of a break in the second half. And, you know, if it could have caught its wind a little bit, that would have helped, you know, because it, Utah was, was getting gains that it wasn't getting in the, in earlier in the game. And I think that fatigue had to have been a little bit of a factor. Right. I think, I think it was, uh, what was it? Utah went on an eight 
plus minute drive. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I don't believe it was three and out and the defense was right back out there. So, right. So it's like, yeah, no rest for the weary, I guess. Yeah. So they'll be back at it next week against Long Island. And then you get the Texas Longhorns here uh, to start Big 12 play. Uh, that should be that should be a very interesting game, no matter what Baylor's record is. Right. It should Baylor's record should be one and two, but uh, it's you know it's the last game really probably between the Bears and the Longhorns for a while. I mean, so um, Baylor fans, as as you will find out, they want to beat Texas in everything. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I suspect there'll be a lot of. Um, intensity around that game. We'll see what the crowd looks like. Um, I doubt it'll be very big next week for Long Island for an 11 a.m. game, but it's uh, be a little cooler. Yeah, but I bet I bet you know fans will come out for Texas just to see if they can you know stick it one more time to the Longhorns. Well, so. I mean, we'll see how the Longhorns have to date ourselves here do against Alabama. Yeah, but this is the instant reaction. Yeah. So it is, yeah. <laughs> Longhorns have not played yet as we filmed this. Uh what do you want to see, you know, I guess what are the uh areas they need to target the most the Bears as they, you know, move forward. Hmm. I think that uh I mean is it too it's too easy to say quarterback? Mm. Like, is that is that just like can I just say Sawyer Robertson needs to take that next step Mm -hmm. i think he can yeah right i think he i think he showed enough to me today to like where i think like you you give him all the keys until blake shaping is back you just let him be him you don't pull the you know Mm -hmm. lever and go to rj martinez you let sawyer be sawyer and you know and what what made him a four-star prospect to mississippi state let him try that here yeah and uh jerry hill and i were talking after the game and um, he mentioned that he felt like Sawyer actually is better than Blake Shapin in this regard, avoiding sacks. Like yeah. he, he, like he moved around well. Mm-hmm. You know, he he put himself in position where, uh, you know, Utah's pass rush was closing in, but he, you know, kind of got out of it. And um, so I mean, that's a good sign, you yeah. know, uh, going forward and. It's just, like I said, he's got to get those timing down a little bit on some of those throws. I mean, some of them were just like a step or two, yeah. you know, just yeah. overthrown or whatever. And um, there was there was the first interception that he threw. Clearly, he and Josh Cameron were not on the same page because, right. you know, Cameron went this way and, and the ball went yeah. this way. And, yeah, I mean, I don't know, you know, somebody messed up there, whether it was Sawyer or Josh, but uh, yeah, they've got to, they got to get that kind of stuff cleaned up. And I, and I, and I, other than him though, like, I think I, there were steps in every other really category. I know I was singing DJ Coleman's praises up here the entire game, true freshman stepping mm. in for Devin Lemire at, at safety and he had six tackles. And who was the other freshman that started in the secondary? Uh Caden Jenkins. Maybe? Oh, Caden Jenkins. Yeah. Cornerback. He made one, he made a really nice play in the second half, third quarter there. Yeah. yeah. I I mean, and obviously, uh, I mean, I called him out, so to speak, in uh I did a story this week talking about um how receivers were running all over the place uncovered against mm-hmm. Texas state. That was not the case today. And okay. Utah is not a passing team, <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, the coverage was really good, especially the man coverage. I thought for young inexperienced guys, yeah. that's, that's huge. Yeah. That was a really nice play down there in the end zone. I can't remember who made that one, but um, I think it was uh DJ DJ man. Yeah. And he almost had a pick, Yeah, you know, so yeah, there were some good signs I thought, especially defensively. I mean, they they made big strides, yeah. big strides. So uh, zero and two at the end of the day, but um, we'll see. I mean, they they're gonna win next week, but um, after that, we'll see. I mean, uh, hopefully, you know, it won't always be a downer <laughs> in in our post game reactions. So. I'm still looking for my first one. Oh yeah, oh, yeah that's true. <laughs> well, you know, John Warner. Uh, handed you the baton with four straight losses and you're just like fumbling along with it so uh, <laughs> so we're blaming john yeah, he, he set you up with like downhill momentum yeah okay <laughs> all right thanks